Welcome to Alluvian Gaming's inaugural game review. It's appropriate that this game gets the honor of being this channel's first game review, the original, the OG review as it were, since today we're in Egypt discovering the origin of the Creed of Assassins in the aptly named Assassin's Creed Origins. Ubisoft's latest entry in the Assassin's Creed franchise. The first thing you notice in any Assassin's Creed game is the setting, adding to the list of interesting places we have visited, like the Middle East, Italy, Revolutionary US, the Caribbean, France, England, and now we find ourselves in Ancient Egypt. First of all, the period referred to as Ancient Egypt actually was a stretch of a little over 3,000 years, and the game takes place at the very tail end of that period, ending with the death of Cleopatra VII. The pyramids have already been built. There are ruins everywhere that were probably magnificent a thousand years before the game takes place, but now they are slowly being reclaimed by the sands. There's a lot of Greek and Roman influence spread around Egypt at this time. It was incredibly interesting, and all of it made sense within the story. We're seeing the end of the Ancient Egypt period, not the height of it, which was my expectation going in. Though I did enjoy seeing this culturally rich place going through such a major change in its identity. Unlike previous Assassin's Creed entries, you don't play as an Assassin or a Templar, but instead as Bayek of Siwa, the last of the Magi Order who were seen as protectors of Egypt. In fact, the Assassins and Templar don't even exist at this time. It is called Origins after all. Bayek, everyone in Egypt's errand boy, is a likable protagonist, along with his eagle sidekick, Senu, who aids him by spotting treasure, marking enemies when scouting through his eyes, and by occasionally clawing at their faces as a distraction. It's very effective. We follow the two as they set out on an epic quest of revenge. The game's story does get a bit cliche in that regard. To avoid spoilers, some people did something bad to Bayek, so now he has to hunt them down one by one. Cliché doesn't necessarily mean bad, after all. Some of the best movies and games are based on clichés and tropes that have been done to death. It's just familiar, really. But the game does a good job mixing it up every now and again, zigging when you're expecting a zag, even changing the character you control a few times. They really did a good job keeping you guessing and interested in the story. The game is absolutely beautiful, and it's impressive how much vibrancy they're able to bring to a game that's setting is primarily desert. The game could have easily looked drab and dingy and awash with off-white and tan, and there is a fair share of that, but the game didn't feel smothered in it. They really did put a lot of effort into making every nook and cranny feel unique and interesting. Every point of interest and location had its own story to tell, from cave to a small village to a pillage tomb to a random cliff. Exploring the map never felt boring. Ubisoft went back to the drawing board with an all-new RPG-style progression system with experience points, character levels which grant skill points that you can spend how you wish in the skill tree, and random loot drops from slain enemies. It's pretty well done, though it leads to those odd moments where you wander into a high-level area inadvertently and get one shot by guards that look identical to the ones you were just killing with ease, but these ones have a higher arbitrary number by their health bar. It really takes you out of the immersion when things like that happen, and make it clear that you're playing a game versus having an experience. There's also plenty to do, maybe too much. The open world is quite large, which is probably why they included a neat mechanic that you can toggle on and off while riding on your horse or camel that will cause them to either blindly follow the current road you're on, go to the current quest objective, or to a waypoint that you place in the world, making long treks a lot less tedious, which worked pretty well for the most part. The map is absolutely littered with points of interest that you just cannot help but check out and clear for the loot and XP. You can fight in the arenas for fame, glory, and of course the loot and XP. You can even go chariot racing and live out your Ben-Hur fantasies for loot and XP, of course. Admittedly, the chariot racing was more tedious than fun and honestly hurt the game more than it helped. It felt completely separate from the game and suffered from really bad rubber band type AI that was just completely frustrating to play. The mode featured ramming other chariots and drifting around corners and other moves, but all of those things just slowed you down. There was no point to any of it. I think this is one of those situations where less is more. Another complaint that I had, the side quests were kind of repetitive. I cannot tell you how many times I was suckered in to go to save someone. Once I arrive, they're injured, in a cage, waiting to be freed. Once freed, oh no, they're hurt so bad they can't walk. You're then forced to carry them slowly to safety. If you're attacked during your escape, you've got to set them down, deal with the threat, and then pick them back up and slowly shamble out of the danger zone. I think everyone can agree that escort quests are just the worst. 
And this is the worst of the worst. And then to add the cherry on top of the worst cupcake you've ever eaten, once you set your charge down in the safe area, they stand right up like nothing ever happened. What kind of bamboozle is this? Now, the story quests, those were great. It's obvious a lot of effort was put into those, but it was pretty clear with the side quests. On some of them, they just kind of phoned it in. Another nitpick, the camera seemed to have a mind of its own from time to time and made me feel a bit nauseous occasionally, but those instances were few and far between. Certainly not the worst camera I've ever encountered, but it could have been improved a bit. However, my biggest complaint in the game was the in-game shop. Can we just stop putting cash shops in full-price AAA games? especially ones that already have a season pass. I mean, sure, it's not the most egregious example of a shop in a AAA game, but it is there. This isn't a free-to-play game, this isn't a mobile game. It was completely unnecessary. Ubi, you're just being greedy here. You're selling outfits, mounts, weapons. You're even selling skill points in a single-player game. Neither the weapons nor the skill points are just cosmetic either, which seems to be most people's line in the sand when it comes to microtransactions. And yeah, some people may say, well, you can just ignore it. If you don't want to buy anything, don't buy anything. But you're constantly feeling like you're being funneled into the store. If you want to redeem something from Club Ubi, or a pre-order bonus, or an item that came with the Deluxe Edition, you have to retrieve it from the store. It was really off-putting and ultimately detracted from the entire experience. As for the aforementioned Season Pass, it contains two story DLCs, a measly amount of cash shop currency, you know, to drag you back to the shop, and two add-on packs containing weapons, outfits, and a mount. It would be a bit flimsy to me, but the two story DLCs are worth the price of admission and a welcome addition to the game. The Hidden Ones takes place in Sinai off the main map. It is a solid gameplay experience, adding good locations and interesting moments, and further establishes the Order of Assassins as an entity. The Curse of the Pharaohs, however, is great. It takes place in Thebes, also apart from the main map. It provides some great challenges and sequences, and lets you explore the Egyptians' belief in the afterlife. I don't want to spoil anything, but this DLC was really worth playing. I fully completed the game, got the Platinum Trophy, cleared all the POIs, finished both DLCs, and easily put 70 plus hours into the game. So you definitely get your money's worth if you decide to do everything. I thoroughly enjoyed my time with Bayek in Egypt, and honestly wouldn't mind a sequel like we saw with Ezio in Assassin's Creed 2. It's a great game and it's definitely worth playing, even if you've never played an Assassin's Creed game before. All things considered, I give it a solid 8.5 out of 10. Before I end this video, I really felt I should bring up the Discovery Tour mode. In late February, they added a new mode for free to the game called Discovery Tour. It functions like a living museum where you walk around in different areas of the game and take tours, which are filled with nodes that activate a tour guide who will, depending on the tour you select, start telling you about the location you are in, the statues that are in front of you, the different steps of mummification, whatever you're interested in, for a total of 75 different multi-stepped tours. There are no enemies or combat in this mode, so it's appropriate for all skill levels and ages. This mode was a pretty cool addition that not only added more content for those players interested in the real-life subject matter, but also shows that the team really did their research trying to bring Egypt to life in the most accurate way possible. I could totally see a history teacher somewhere using it as a tool in the classroom, and that, to me, is really exciting. The more acceptance games get in the mainstream, especially when viewed as more than just a toy for kids, the better. I hope we get to see more things like this in the future. It would benefit the industry and us, the gamers. Okay, well that wraps up my review of Assassin's Creed Origins. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it. If you loved it, great. If you hated it, well, that's not so great. But either way, tell me what I did right or wrong in the comments below. Have a good one!